Hello, everyone, and welcome to 33 Founders. Jen and I are delighted today to be here with Jeff Bartikovics, co-founder and CEO of Tasting Table. So, Jeff, salutations, and uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great chatting with you. Like I mentioned before, I learned about Tasting Table a few months ago, and since then, I await the daily email every morning, especially the ones that are about dessert. You decided, Jeff, to take the risk of building this company back in 2008 after leaving investment banking. And it really was in the beginning a wild ride. So I'm talking about Don here, which I heard you talk about in a founder's discussion. Can we start out with you telling us the journey in the beginning of building Tasting Table? Sure. So uh, I have a co-founder in that, uh, John McDonald, who is a restaurateur here in New York City had the idea of essentially doing tasting table, I'm sorry, doing daily candy for foodies. Um, And he was good friends with the pilot group and Bob Pittman and the guys who owned daily candy at that time. And they were talking about doing such a thing. And I kind of came into the fold because I was working on some some technology uh, for running daily email businesses. Um, There's actually no software even today available off the shelf uh, that is a single system that handles all the aspects of running an email publication as opposed to just a website. Uh, So we decided that we would put all those things together, my technology, his idea, and a check from the pilot group, and that we would launch. Uh, And then, you know, off we went to the races and hired some people up and just kind of got going the same way any startup would. I was initially very excited to talk to you about content creation and how to craft the perfect headline. But as I shared with you before, I soon realized that that's not how it works at Tasting Table, and I think that's why you guys are so special. Can you tell us, Jeff, why your non-email marketing mentality is different and how that's led you to have a multi-million dollar company. Sure. Uh, and, and by the way, thank you for the compliment of saying that you look forward to seeing the, the email in your inbox uh, each day. That's exactly the kind of feeling that we want to uh, arouse in people when they're sitting at their desks, as 85% of white collar professionals do in their inbox. You're doing some work and that tasting table email that you signed up for hits your inbox. You get a little zing of, oh, what's in there today because it's not the same as um, an email that's trying to sell you something per se. Uh, so I call uh, you know, an email from a store or from a company that's trying to sell you something, classic email marketing, and what Tasting Table is trying to do is be an email delivered publication. Uh, we hold ourselves to the same standards that a print magazine would in terms of the quality and interest of what we're writing and also the beauty of it, uh, the photography, the graphic design, all of that great stuff. But we just happens to deliver it to you by email so that it's super convenient for you as opposed to kind of having to wait around for you know, a print publication to show up or having to remember to go out to a destination website. Awesome. And another thing that sets you apart then is your test kitchen, which was inspired by your weekly dinner parties. So can you share, first of all, just one of your uh, favorite memories at this tasting table, the physical one? Uh, we call it the test kitchen so, so that people don't get confused. Um, the downside of having the test kitchen and having entertained thousands and thousands of people over the years is that unfortunately there are some people who think that tasting table is a catering hall. Uh, so I, I always like to remind people that that is our test kitchen. Um, we built it over, I'm losing my math here, I guess it's over th- three years ago at this point in the same building where my apartment where we launched tasting table was located. Uh, initially because we wanted, we needed a space where we would be able to create uh, video and photo content associated with the recipes we create. Uh, very important to point out that every recipe that we share on Tasting Table is actually tested uh, the way that every recipe that goes in a cookbook is tested, which is not, of course, the case with a lot of recipe aggregator type sites. So we needed a space for that, but you know, form follows function. It just so happens that the space is very long and narrow. So there's a beautiful kitchen at one end. And I said, what am I going to do with the rest of the space? Well, let's just put a 30 seater dining table there and we'll just, we'll have events there. Things for our consumers uh, located in New York City or those coming to New York City to be able to come to a, a dinner with a guest chef, cocktail parties, book signings, etc. And it was one of those things where I didn't quite know what it was going to turn into, but it really has become uh, a destination for chefs internationally at this point who are passing through town who want to come and do a dinner either for their colleagues or, you know, in the, in the industry or some press folks or some tasting table fans. Uh, and thousands and thousands of people have come through this space in the last few years. So it's, it's been a nice little uh, cherry on top of the Sunday that we've been creating over the last five years. We can't wait to hang out over there. <laughs> 
So now you've quoted Bob Quit, uh, Pittman, who's a personal friend and investor, and he said to make decisions quickly but not fall in love with the answers. So how does that mentality drive your work? Uh, probably in my infamous style of changing my mind really quickly about things all the time based on the data. I think what uh, Bob, I'm not going to speak for Bob, but my interpretation of it and the reason that I've repeated it in the past is that as a leader, it's really important to have a viewpoint. I don't think that any well-run small business, let alone startup, can grow quickly in the right direction if all the decisions are going to be made by consensus. So you, you have to have a viewpoint. You have to have done enough studying and analysis um, of uh, your space in order to say in an in, in instant, here's what we're going to try. But as you start trying, you have to make sure that you've built in key performance indicators and metrics and milestones and signals to yourself about whether or not that thesis is being proven by reality. And you have to actually have scheduled some time in the near future to see what those KPIs are telling you. And if you're wrong, don't worry about saving face. Don't worry about thanking the people who are right and you were wrong. Just say, great, I was wrong. Here's what we're doing instead. And that's the way we been doing things at Tasting Table since the beginning, and I think it's part of our success. I think it certainly lends to your productivity. So as you mentioned leadership and you take on that role of CEO, how do you personally get into a state of flow? I am, to my own detriment, one of those guys who is constantly experimenting with different ways of being productive. So every time I share a tip <laughs> six months later, I am on to something new. So for me personally, it's about trying new things and always changing things up. Mm. But I will say that at one thing that's totally consistent throughout and one thing that we always ask at a tasting table in interviews is how folks manage their time to make sure that they're getting everything done that needs to be done. And for me, that's always about list management. Whether or not your, your tasks are on a piece of paper, I, I, I print out my calendar every day and I uh, tape it to my desk, a hard copy, even though it's going to change, because that's the place where if I'm on the phone or such, I'm going to make a quick note about a to-do that I'm going to put into the computer later or whatever it is. So that's my hard copy scratch paper during the day. And then I happen to use uh, Clear, the app and the desktop version on Mac in order to monitor uh, or track the things that I need to get done. That's all good to make sure you, that what needs to get done gets done. But what you have to layer on top of that is that there has to be a part of your day every day either the end of the day or the beginning of the day, when you're actually taking the time to go through those lists, make sure that you haven't forgotten something, taking the time to, to add deadlines to things that need to get done, and more importantly, figuring out what the most important things to achieve today are. Uh, it's a system I've used um, over the years, but it's one that uh, has changed in terms of how I use it. It used to be all paper, then it was all digital, now it's a combination of both. So it's not when you're taking Suki to dog school that you're going through the list in the morning. Uh, no, for that, I do love the, um, the Siri reminder thing. I use Siri for two things. Um, one is uh, telling her to wake me up, right, to set the mm -hmm. alarm clock. So wake me up at 7 a.m. The other one is walking down the street and saying, remind me that I need to send that book to Todd when I get to the office. Mm -hmm. Those are two things with Siri that work really well because when you're walking and you've got the dog and the coffee and <laughs> um, the phone and all this stuff, going, it's, 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 it's hard to actually take a note with your thumbs. So Jeff, people often say that companies are direct reflections of their founders. And I really get the vibe of your personality and everything tasting table. What are you most proud of since you started back in 2008? I was just having a drink uh, at my apartment with uh, a woman who was our COO uh, until, again, I'm losing track of time, maybe a year, year and a half ago. And we were catching up on a lot of the original folks, mm -hmm. the, the, what I consider you know, the tasting table originals, and where they are and what they're doing. And you know, we're only five and a half, six years into this thing. And the idea that there are folks who were just starting out in their careers six years ago who now have big jobs elsewhere, um, who have brought this kind of way of thinking and doing things um, to other businesses is it's something that it's something that I can have a lot of pride about. Not that it's the way that I do things, but rather it's the culture of the business that we had created together at the start of Tasting Table. So now part of what you were just talking about, it relates a lot to your team. And you've discussed the importance of preparing your team 
to demonstrate your company's ethos. So can you sum up your approach in one sentence or is that impossible? Um, whatever I say is going to sound glib and could easily be made fun of. So, um, <laughs> uh, what would I say? The only thing I would say is the only thing that's the only thing that doesn't change a tasting table is that we're always changing and that you have to not only be prepared for constant change, but you must thrive on it in order to succeed. Uh, that's true, but it's certainly not, it doesn't encapsulate all of the things that I think about how, uh, well-run businesses run, but it's certainly the thing that I try to stress. So I want to close with this, Jeff, and I know you're not huge into legendary founder tales and sage advice, but what is an essential component of your life that's leaving you so fulfilled right now? The multidisciplinary aspect of it. Um, the, the, the fact that starting a business brings you into contact with all kinds of people, not just other founders, but people within your industry in particular. So I think of all the chefs and cookbook authors that I've met over the years, the other entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs that I'm helping now, um, you know, the fact that this lifestyle um, also allows me to go on business trips all over the place to sell the tasting table message to premium advertisers and folks that you meet there, the things you see. Uh, it, it's just that life feels a lot bigger today uh, than it does, not not financially or, or, or not even geographically, but it just feels bigger in terms of content than it did when I was back at the investment bank as a business manager. And that's something that I'm I'm very grateful for every day. Great. So can we close with you telling our users how they can get onto Tasting Table and sign up for the daily newsletter? It couldn't be easier. Just go to tastingtable.com. There's a little sign-up box right there at the top. You enter your email address and your zip code and you're done. Can't wait to have you all. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you guys.